Hello, I am Fantastic and Fantastic, and today I'm going to be reviewing Red Mirror and Light Hera Dragon. So, Red Mirror and Light Hera Dragon have both been released in North America and EU, and they are for sale in the Monster Point shop for 750000 This This places them basically in Dark Athena territory in terms of the price tag, and they are essentially two and a half times more expensive than all the other Monster Point cards that are currently available. Now, the biggest question on everyone's mind right now is, is it worth the justification? Because we had Dark Athena come out, and yes, she is powerful and was able to clear plenty of content, but we've seen a bit of decline, at least when approaching Colosseum, Cosmic Trinity, and some of the newer Challenge 10s. So, is it possible that the these two new 750,000 Monster Point cards can hopefully have more staying power? Well, let's take a look in this following review. So, basically this video and article will summarize my opinions on the two cards and whether or not you should or should not be purchasing them. So this is the way I value and approach Monster Point card spending. This may not necessarily apply to yourself because your situation may be different and because of the way I approach and view them will dictate heavily how valuable or important these cards are to me. So with that in mind, these are the points or questions I like to ask myself before I ever purchase any Monster Point card. How much Monster Points do I currently have and how fast can I farm or regain them? So obviously, that question is more so pertaining to whether or not there's going to be future cards being released. What if things get buffed in the future? The four gentlemen are in a terrible place right now, and they are due for a new evolution and or buff. So will that possibly bring them relevance? Do you want to make sure you have enough monster points lying to pick them up if they become powerful? So that is something to keep in mind as well as how fast do you acquire it. If you are very IAP friendly, you probably have lots of monster points anyways, and you probably don't even need to watch this. If you are farming on a regular basis, you may be able to replenish your monster point stock fast enough because we are about three months behind Japan. The next question I ask myself is, will this purchase help me tackle new content or propel myself forward? So for myself, I am able to clear all the content currently available in the game. So when I look for a monster point card, I want to make sure it is able to actually help me progress further. It's more so positioning myself well to tackle the content that we know is coming out from Japan to North America. Now again, that situation may not necessarily be yourself, and if you are still struggling to say clear Arena 1, certain Monster Point cards will open access for that, and it may be worthwhile for you to purchase, whereas for myself it may not be as meaningful. Now, if the answer was no, like, will it help me tackle anything, why are you really considering this purchase? And that's more so applicable to myself at this point in time. Do I even have a team and or use for the new card? You obviously want to make sure you can utilize the card because just because, say, like when Raw Dragon first came out, people bought him and then they realized they don't have any Dark Callies or Isis or Indras or anything that actually supports a Raw Dragon team and they were sad. So do your own research. Make sure you actually have a team or box to support the card you want to purchase. In addition, we want to examine what are the future prospects for the card because we want to make sure it has some staying power. You don't want to dump all your monster points into a card and then have it become less viable moving forward. Like we do have the three month prediction window from Japan, so we know it's going to be relevant and or powerful for a little modest period of time to come. And then finally, can I actually acquire the evolution materials required to evolve said card? That only applies to certain instances as well as generally newer or maybe mid game players. So. With all those points in mind, that is how I evaluate a Monster Point card and whether or not I should be making a purchase. So I did make a Monster Point flow chart um, in a previous article. It's reasonably up to date. The only thing you should really replace is the Yomi Dragon and pretend that says Odin Dragon and just kind of maybe ignore the Dark Athena and Raw Dragon at the bottom. But regardless, it's still a reasonably competent Monster Point flowchart. You can click on the flowchart, it'll take you to a bigger window so you can see it. Can I see it here? Kind of. I'm not going to adjust myself. But that's the kind of idea how I think about it. So let's go into more detail of each of the two Monster Point cards that have been released. So Red Miru is now the strongest Heartcross leader in the game, and that may or may not be really saying very much. 
because the Heart Cross, Mo Heart Cross Meta was very dominating in 2016, but eventually became surpassed by mono color teams as well as combo oriented teams. And the reason why the Heart Cross Meta took off is because at the time they had relatively unparalleled damage output, they had incredible durability, but they did have some innate drawbacks. Their main drawbacks were a struggle with combo shields as well as unable to really optimize the board because you do have spatial limitations as well as being reasonably orb hungry you need five hard orbs for activation and you need your damaging orbs alongside of it so when you look at say miru like light miru most people built her row base so that means you needed five hard orbs and six light orbs to actually deal respectable amounts of damage so that could be a little challenging and that orb hungry nature became eventually their downfall because they just really couldn't keep abreast with other options currently available. So Red Mirror does try to remedy these problems because they do grant her on recovery multiplier so it becomes a little easier to stall but then again you don't want to use your hearts to heal you want to use your hearts to heal and cross so that's a little counterintuitive to a certain extent and she also has the highest um, one of the highest um, offensive multipliers for a heart cross. I know Ranove does have a high multiplier, but he's far more tedious and troublesome to activate by comparison to Red Mirror. So we're just gonna say Red Mirror is better in terms of offensive capabilities, which she is. Also being bind immune helps. She has double TPA, she has a seven combo awakening. So she's quite, she's got a very nice offensive spread. Her active skill is quite synergistic. It makes three hearts and three fires. So that is actually meaningful. And while seven combos may feel a little daunting on a six by five board you do have to obviously dedicate a large portion to the heart cross itself so you are facing spatial limitations on the board because you have to basically dedicate almost like a three by three box so basically three combos worth to make one combo of a heart cross so that is a little problematic but she's going to still suffer the same problems as all other heart cross leaders have because she still needs to make that heart cross and to a certain extent combos can be a little challenging yes you get basically three times additional attack for a single red mirror at seven combos but it can be difficult to squeeze in a heart cross and seven combos you can, for the most part, usually get six to seven on a given board with a heart cross involved. But again, that may be pushing the limits of certain players comboing skills. Now, what the main drawback is that not because it's not that the fact that she cannot hear max multiplier as consistently that happens with a lot of other leaders and that's all right. But the problem is her durability is tied to having your maximum basically having your multiplier present by matching a heart cross if you don't match a heart cross you are very vulnerable you have low health at that point in time so you might just get obliterated by an attack and sure you can say well i can heal up from it but you'll never be able to kill anything unless you get that heart cross so you are very orb hungry and very dependent on those hard orbs being present so you become very vulnerable to any bosses that take away hearts or even just orb troll so you may be forced to use active skills on floors you don't want to necessarily use them on. And that's gonna be a very big liability moving forward through harder content. Yes, Red Mirror can clear lots of content. You'll probably be able to clear Arena 3 of relative ease, but then again, Light Mirror did as well. It was just a little slow. Red Mirror would probably be a little faster because it's less orb hungry because you can make just combo slash TPA instead of rows by comparison. But if you look at other top tier leaders currently available, they tend to have their defensive multiplier a lot more readily available by comparison because most of them have either an easier shielding mechanic, you basically match combos, you get a shield, you have a passive health multiplier, don't have to worry about it. But Red Miru is not going to have the defensive multiplier unless she's dealing damage at the same time. So stalling can be a little problematic to a certain extent, but my biggest concern is that she's going to get hit and you just die because you don't have enough health and you didn't cross to save yourself. So. If we look at the pros and cons, she is the strongest heart cross leader currently available. They do have a relative, they do have a reliable recovery component. You basically match heart orbs, you make enough combos, you heal a very sizable amount. You do have offensive awakenings, which does lead her to become a like a reasonably strong sub because you got a bind immune sub who makes fire and hearts as well as having useful awakenings. She does have a synergistic active skill for her leader skill and no evolution is required and she's very pretty and i think that's the reason why i see more red mirrors on my friends list than light hero dragons but that's another story in terms of cons it's 750,000 monster points you have to think this is costing me two and a half times what another mp card would cost myself as well as the fact that she's incredibly orb hungry on a six by five board you have on average 
five orbs of each type because there's six elements, 30 orbs, 30 divided by six is five. But we know from experience that it's never statistically perfect and you're oftentimes gonna be losing out on those hard orbs. Furthermore, because you're not erasing the entire board every time, it's not gonna be, you're not gonna match all 30 orbs. You're gonna remove at least five hard orbs at minimum and you're very unlikely to have five hard orbs fall down to replace them. So that can be problematic at the same time. Heart crosses are awkward. A lot of people don't even like the play style, but that's another issue all to itself. And her defensive multiplier is unreliable because you need to have that heart cross. If you don't have hearts present, you're gonna die. You're gonna to have to use an active skill and you basically are wasting actives at times you don't want to compared to other leaders currently available. And she does not surpass any current top tier leaders at this point in time. So that is problematic. So you'd be investing a large amount of monster points into something that's not gonna clear more content than a lot of other leaders currently available. That seems a little counterintuitive in my opinion, because in conclusion, I would not purchase Red Mirror because she does not eclipse the current leaders available. And maybe if she was 300,000 monster points, you can consider it. It's a lot more manageable by comparison. We did have a lot of monster points given out for free, but at 750, that is a big price tag. And it's hard to justify her usage because it's not really going to take you that much further. Like by comparison, Dark Athena will be able to help you clear far more content with comparable teams because Dark Athena is easier to use and faster and more common. You'll find a lot more people with Dark Athena than you will with Red Mirror. So that is another point to take into consideration. And one last thing is that Dark Athena upon her release was able to clear basically most of the content compared to other leaders available at the time. So because of that, it's making more people have Dark Athena than they would be purchasing Red Mirror because Red Mirror is not eclipsing anything currently available. Well, it's not eclipsing any of the top tier leaders currently available. If you are really set on buying Red Miru, you should be focusing on fire subs who can produce hearts and fire orbs, of course, as well as those that have seven combo awakenings as well as TPAs, because that will synergize with her offensive awakenings and the overall play style. Another thing you may want to have is time extend because, well, you need to make a heart cross, and unlike regular Miru, she doesn't have two seconds built in through her leader skill. So now we come to Light Hera Dragon. So Light Hera Dragon utilizes 5 Orb 1 Enhance, or 501E for short form. A lot of players reference it as that. But for 5 Orb 1 Enhanced leaders, you basically have to match 5 connected orbs with at least one of them being enhanced. That can be referred to as a sparkle and or a firework. And when you do trigger it, match that exact pattern of 5, no more, no less, you trigger your offensive multiplier. And you can kind of see Light Hair Dragon as an alternative to Yomi Dragon, but it costs 750,000 monster points. So presently speaking, five Orb 1 Enhanced Leaders are reasonably orb hungry for the same reason that Miru was, because you need five orbs, but you don't need to have two different elements competing against each other. So it's a little more manageable by comparison. And at least for Light Hair Dragon, the defensive multiplier of her health is always there. You don't have to worry about it. It's going to be there all the time. So you can tank big hits without worry, and you don't have to worry about actually having sufficient orbs on the board to trigger that um, le leader skill because it's always there. But the problem is, five or one enhanced leaders, no matter how powerful their multiplier, how powerful they may feel, they are going to have the same liabilities that they've always had in the past. So it is a little easier nowadays to have enhanced orbs on the board, mostly because we have a lot more subs that can bring many orb enhanced awakenings. But the problem is you need that enhanced orb to actually deal damage. If you connect five orbs with no enhance, nothing happens. You don't get sparkle or fireworks. And that is a problem because if a boss will disable your woken skills, or change those enhanced orbs to something else like jammers or poison, you are not gonna be able to activate because even if you change the jammers and poisons back to your color, they won't retain that enhanced status so you're out of luck. And there are ways to overcome this problem the most common one is either bringing an enhancer as well, like something like Light Akachi would have beautiful synergy with Light Hera Dragon. But another option is to bring a sub that has obviously the Light Orb and Wake, Light Orb Enhance Awakenings, but also has Enhance Orb Awakenings for another element. With that other element, you are able to have a little backup, so to speak. If your light orbs get changed away, you can convert that secondary element into light orbs, and then you would have your enhanced orbs. But another problem you are going to be gambling with is any board changer you do use. Let's say your board had five light orbs to start with, so you have five enhanced orbs on the board. Use a board changer. You have to pray that one of those five enhanced orbs came out as a light orb, otherwise you're going to have big problems. Obviously you can side screw that with an enhancer, but again, you're wasting two active, using two actives instead of one 
because most teams would be able to just pop board changer and be on their merry little way. So this is a problematic situation for all five orb one enhanced leaders, but a bigger concern I want to stress is that their viability in three player dungeons is severely diminished. And that is because if your partners are not running a team that has orb enhances of your color, you are never going to have your enhanced color because let's say you are person B. Person A has a board of no enhanced orbs. They take their turn. No enhanced orbs fall down. It comes to you. You can't do anything. So you just kind of sit there, maybe set up your board for the, your falling partner. Some enhanced orbs fall down. Person C matches away. One enhanced orbs remaining. Person A matches. That enhanced orb is gone. It comes back to you. You don't have enhanced orbs once again. So you can see the problem that's going to occur unless everyone has the same mentality that they want to bring these five orb one or at least orb enhanced leaders or teams that have the same color as yourself. So that is gonna be a problem moving forward for Light Hair Dragon. Now, all those are liabilities for sure, but one big consideration is that you can pair Light Hair Dragon with Light Metatron, who's a five-star and incredibly common Godfest exclusive card, as well as Paimon, who is a six-star and rare by comparison. But because you can pair with Light Metatron and almost everyone and their mom has a Light Metatron, even my mom has a Light Metatron, you are able to basically just piggyback off of a friend who has light Hera dragon. Now you're going to say, well, what if everyone follows that same train of thought? No one will buy Hera dragon, but that's not the case. People will still want to buy light Hera dragon and you can just piggyback with light Metatron. I actually have a clear on my YouTube channel, which will be embedded into this post at some point of me clearing the one shot challenge with my mom's account using a light Metatron as a leader paired of light Hera dragon. And that pairing is actually very proficient because you get a recovery multiplier instead of just four times health. And because of that, you do have to compensate for the fact they have to match a cross of light instead of five or one enhance, but it still gets the job done. So you don't really need to buy light Hera dragon. So in terms of pros and cons, they do have potent damage output because again, it's a base, a very large multiplier for five or one enhance, incredibly easy to use. One combo kills things technically. They have seven combo awakening and they have three skill boosts. So they do have some merits as a sub as well as being bind immune. They have a consistent health multiplier, which is important and to take into consideration when playing through harder content. And they do have a synergistic active skill, which produces four light and four hard orbs. And they don't also do not require any evolution whatsoever. So they come ready to use out of the box. Furthermore, you can pair with Light Metatron and Paimon. Unfortunately, they also cost 750,000 monster points. They are a five orb one enhanced leader, so you must have those enhanced orbs present or you're gonna have a bad time. They're a very poor quality three player leader unless everyone has coordination and they don't surpass any current top tier leaders. It's cool, it's fun to play. I like five orb one enhanced leaders, but if I really wanted to play with a Light Hair Dragon, I'll just bring a Light Metatron and pair with someone else and then learn how to make color crosses, which are surprisingly hard to make if you've never played with them before. So in conclusion, Light Hair Dragon is, in my opinion, the last 750,000 monster point card you should purchase because she offers the least overall value because I feel that Red Mirror can clear more content by comparison, even though it does have some liabilities, Light Hair Dragon is just worse overall, in my opinion. Furthermore, you don't even need to own Light Hair Dragon. Some people will argue that you can pair Fire Mirror with Diabolus, but Diabolus is an incredibly rare god um, collab card. Red Mirror is 750,000 monster points, so you're much less likely to have either one of those options available by comparison to Light Metatron. If you are really gung-ho on using Light Hair Dragon, you want to obviously prioritize gods and devils, but most likely gods, perhaps, just so you can pair with Light Metatron or Paimon if you want to. Paimon wants devils, I forgot. But gods and devils, for the most part, that have Light Orb Enhances, as well as ideally one card who has an enhanced orb awakening for a different element than light. So before I conclude this video and article, I want to just use Dark Athena as a reference point because Dark Athena was the very first monster point card to be released for 750,000 monster points. And while her potency is definitely beginning to fade, she's still a very amazing leader for the vast majority of players. Power creep is a term used to basically define the gradual increase of power of newer cards being released that does eventually replace older versions. However, just because a new card comes out that is more powerful, it does not automatically make the older leaders bad. They still have the exact same amount of potency as they did before. It's just that they're less meta or they are no longer the most efficient team available. And while Dark Athena is suffering from power creep, especially for Cosmic Trinity, which is a three player co-op dungeon, Colosseum, and some challenge tens, she still can clear the vast majority of the content in Puzzle and Dragons and will be very easy to use for the average player. So 
yes, she is falling to power creep, but she's still an incredible team and leader for the average player. And judging by the Player's Choice Godfest votes, it's still being highly desired by the North American player base with the inclusion of Sima Yi and obviously Haku at number three. So North America is still very much in the mindset of we love Dark Athena. And because of that, Dark Athena is still going to be the best 750,000 monster point card because, again, she offers consistent arena three clears, one of the more consistent arena three clears, in my opinion. And that's going to definitely open up a lot of doors for most players out there because now you have access to something that can clear things fast and efficiently while also being easy to use. So if I had to recommend them in order, I would get Dark Athena first if you have the team to support her. Maybe consider Red Mirror and probably don't consider Light Hera Dragon. So in conclusion, Red Mirror and Light Hair Dragon are cool on paper, but they're overpriced. If they were 300,000 monster points, I would probably be a lot more eager to recommend you purchasing them because it'll add some diversity to your box, give you some fun, but at 750,000 monster points, you can get an Odin Dragon, a Ragnarok Dragon, and still have change to spare. So let me know what you think about Red Mirror and Light Hair Dragon in the comments below. Hopefully you all have a fantastic day, and happy puzzling.